welcome in. Uh, Lake Lewis does a great job covering the skins as well as the NFL. Kind enough to join us on the Boardwalk Cotton Hotline. We'll talk to him throughout the NFL season, which uh, is uh, about a week or so away. How you doing, bud? I'm good. And yourself? I'm doing really uh, well. And uh, I'm just, you know, with the Phillies imploding like they are, and I don't think the Yankees are catching the Red Sox, I'm ready for some NFL. I'm ready for football because I want to see if uh, Beckham lives up to that contract. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he, (laughs) wow. (laughs) I mean, and, you know, any other player, well, you know, at that position, maybe two or three guys, you can say, okay, they're worth it. Well, that guy's that guy's worth that I, money I for agree. that franchise. I agree. I agree. And, and they couldn't let him walk. Um, you know, you have Barkley. You want to make sure you have that tandem paired up for a long time, and that's how it looks. So, congrats. A yeah, lot yeah, of money, man. It is a lot of money, and I also think though, when you when you look at a player like Beckham, it goes. I think it's going to be an extension from the field. To, to pass the field from a marketing and branding standpoint, I'm not going to put it on the realm of mm-hmm. LeBron James. I'm, I'm not. However, mm-hmm. you know, the social media presence, you know how it works. Sure. I mean, and, and sure. he, he's all over the place. And like I said, now I think he's relieved. He can just go out and play. And th- Again, the only issue I have is, first of all, he's not going to have Eli throwing him the football throughout the duration of this contract. So if you simplify the numbers, it, it matches – it, it it matches exactly what's out there from the uh, from a dollars and cents standpoint when you talk about the wide receiver position. The, it sure does. It, yeah, it, it, it does. I, I, I'll say this, Q. I think the thing that I'm looking forward to seeing is, you, you know, you got paid, you got what you wanted, and probably then to, and then some. Well, now you have to take on a leadership role by default. You have to take that. You get paid that kind of money that comes with that territory too. And he's always been a lead by example guy. He's a hard worker, performs on the field. But I think they're probably looking for him to be a little bit more vocal uh, of a leader and not vocal because he didn't get the ball. Right. <laughs> I mean, right. vocal as to helping the guys like Barkley. And I mean, let's face it, he's the face of the Giants. Yeah. And um, they need him to act accordingly, too, because, you know, the whole thing, you know, over the summer, uh, you know, that's when you know you have superstar status because that was kind of swept under the rug real quick. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. No, you're right about that. Um, how about this story that Cousins turned down ninety million guaranteed from the Jets? I mean, good for him. I mean, at least at least at least folks can say that it wasn't just about the money. And um, you know, a lot of people here in this market, you know, thought that that was the case. And you know, by turning down that kind of money, shows that he was a little bit more. Uh, aware of you know the teams and and the surroundings that he'd be in and and I you and I talked about this off the air as well. We didn't think Kirk Cousins would be a good fit in New York just just temperament wise. Yep, I agree. Else. I just said that to Josh. Yep. Yeah, and this has nothing to do with his personality. He's a nice guy, super nice guy, and that's what I'm talking about. Though right. in New York, you got to have some thick skin, and, and I don't know if Kirk was made for that and let's face it the vikings have more weapons on both sides of the ball and you know he's a guy that's from out that way you know he's a a midwest guy you know so i just think that it's a good fit for him and his family out there in minnesota they just gotta win now yeah you gotta put it all together because it's a lot of money again to uh you you were what two games away from the super bowl last year flew play Man, when They've got to at least get to the NFC Championship yeah, game. No, no doubt. And like I said, if it's not for a fluke play, the Saints uh, march on and uh, the Vikings go home. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, it's not official, but it does look like Rodgers is going to get a new deal. Multiple reports, uh, Rappaport's uh, reporting as well, largest in NFL history. Um, obviously, it's going to tie him to Green Bay for well beyond two years of his contract, and basically he'll finish out his career. Um, mm-hmm. You know, look, I mean, you can look at his – his numbers throughout the course of his career, and we typically have Mike Daniels on and talk about the defensive side of the ball for the Packers. You know, mm-hmm. you, you give this guy a defense and he's healthy, then there's dangerous a team uh, that's out there just because he's under center. Yeah, and you clearly saw his value because when he got hurt last year, it was just, you know, everything went upside down for them. And, you know, he, he he's the guy that has earned it. You know, if you're going to say that, you can say he's earned it. I mean, probably more so than Odell, probably, you know, obviously more so than Kirk because of the simple fact is he's got an MVP to his name and he's got a Super Bowl to his name. So, uh, you know, that's another guy that if he can stay healthy because, you know, we know what happens when he doesn't. 
uh, if he can stay healthy and they get some defensive play in Green Bay, they could be a player this year. They could surprise some people. Yeah, and it's funny because you had that trade today, right? Hunley's going to back up Russell Wilson in Seattle. Deshaun Kaiser is now going to back up Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. Uh, well, you know, it, it makes more sense when you look at their 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 style style play. play. Yep. You know? Yeah, it, it just it just makes more sense. And let's face it, Kaiser's a young guy that you know we all thought coming out of Notre Dame was a pro a pro talent. Uh, but he's young, and I think now that he can wait and sit and watch and learn from the best, uh, that maybe, you know, when day Aaron Rodgers steps aside, and it's not going to be any time soon, I'll tell you that, um, you know, maybe Kaiser can be the guy that, that has learned. And, you know, and, and, and let's face it, he's also a play away from being their quarterback. So... <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, no, no doubt it is. Uh, again, a couple minutes, Lake Lewis joining us on the Boardwalk on the Hotline on a Wednesday. He'll join us throughout the NFL season, which, again, kicks off next Thursday. You got the Falcons and the Eagles. The Eagles, uh, you know, Doug came out and said, or their reports by Friday, he will uh, perhaps name a starter, whether it's going to be Carson Wentz, whether it's going to be Nick Foles. I, I know people take the preseason as meaningless. I get it because of the injuries. It's ugly football, but... Here's one thing about the preseason. You do need some reps. You just need a series or two. And you look at how poorly that offense is played. Falls is played. I know they don't have some starters. But if you're an Eagles fan, it's not – listen, you're not panicking. You're concerned if Nick Falls is out there week five, six, seven, eight. Then there's cause right. for concern. But if right. you are, Doug, if you are the Philadelphia Eagles, are you a little more cautious – to throw Wentz out there, even if he's medically cleared, or if he is medically cleared for contact, do you throw him out there week one? If he's cleared, if he's cleared and he's passed even, you know, just just I mean a strenuous workout routine, you know, just just to show that he can do some things, then yeah, I play him. However, I think you and I both know it, it, my gut feeling is. I just don't know if he's ready. <laughs> and I and I you know, I have a friend that's on that coaching staff and he said he looks good. He said he's doing everything they ask him to do and that he's a different different breed, you know, a different type of cat. So uh they seem to think he's ready. Um I will say this, if he is ready, he's gotta play because you and I have both seen holes in the in the preseason and I, I get, he is yeah. who he is. I mean, he's he's yeah, not, he, yeah, that's right. he's that's who he is. Right. That team won last year collectively. It wasn't the Nick Foles show. It was a collective, you know, group of guys that that's that's what wins Super Bowls a team, and that's what they did last year. So I would say that you know you have a guy that did take you to the Super Bowl and win it. So I don't think there's a lack of confidence with the players for, you know, Nick Foles. I mean, he got them some hardware last year. But I, I, we all know the wow factor and the if factor that Carson Wentz brings. And if it looks like in their practices, you know, I'm not up there in those practices, uh, but but I know from my friend on the coaching staff that he's doing what they're asking him to do. As long as he does that all of next week, I think he should be the starter. It's his team. Oh, no doubt it is. And like I said, it's you don't take anything away from Foles, but you know he's a guy that you don't going, want to mortgage your future either. Well, that's the thing. So you're, you're, no, like no it. doubt. I mean, that's that's one of the things I've been harping on. I mean, you, it, it's not a must week one in the NFL. It's not. It's not a must win. It's not. Now, you used a preseason to work out some of the kinks and knock some of the rust off. What you don't want like the Giants a couple of years ago where their offense never even got in gear in the preseason and it manifested itself and carried over into the regular season. That That's what well, you well, want to avoid. Yeah. yeah, but I'll say this to you, Q. What, what's five days? I mean, let, let's be honest. If, if Okay, so Wentz doesn't play week one. Does that make them any more ready for week two? No, no, no. And, and four I four or five days of practice. No, no. Listen, you're 100 percent correct. I've had guys call up and say the exact callers have said the same exact thing. But again, I counter that. Where's it written in stone? If he misses week one, he has to play in week two. No, it's not. It's not. If he misses week one, I mean, there's a chance he could miss week two if they were to win. You just don't want to. I look at it like this. You just want to, you want to have your best eleven on your offense. Agree. On the agree. Field. Agree. If if they are able to, if Wentz, one thing you you know about competitors is that they'll get out there regardless. Of course, they're but, their, they're their own I worst enemy. Guy, 
Yeah, but I, I think Wentz is, is smart enough to understand that he's the face of that franchise, and 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 you know we talked about this too. He wants to win more than anybody else in that yes, locker room right now because because he doesn't feel like he led them to a Super Bowl. Yeah. So you, you just want to make sure that he is ready. But and I don't think the Eagles would would put that guy out there in harm's way. Uh, I think if he starts, that's because they're hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent convinced that he's. He's ready to go. Um, I just have a tough time believing that's the case, you know, that – but we've seen it before. I mean, remember Adrian Peterson. I'm dealing with that now here. Uh, you know, the, the the guy came back 2014 from that uh, knee injury and, and followed it up with 1,400 yards plus the next year. <laughs> and no one expected to see that. So, you know, technology, guys being competitive, maybe wins is in that in that in that rare grouping. Yeah. Um listen, is 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 A P just a body right now? I no. Mean, <laughs> no. Well well hold no, on. No. Let me do, do, I, I don't think <laughs> listen, I'm sorry. I'll tell you right now. Listen, does he really believe he's gonna go out there and he's gonna carry the ball twenty, twenty five times a game? Uh I don't think he I don't think he believes it i think he knows it and there's a and but let me say this though this offense isn't that type of offense this isn't this isn't a smash mouth offense this is a pass first jay gruden offense that's what you brought in uh you know alex smith he can do exactly the same things the cousins did and hopefully he can expand on it a little bit but i will say this just from seeing with my own eyes uh, every day of practice and, and, and in that uh, first preseason game for Peterson last week, it was remarkable. I mean, it, it absolutely was jaw-dropping to see at 33 some of the stuff that he was doing. And I understand people are going to say it's preseason. Well, running backs are a little different. You still have to run. <laughs> you still have to take hits. You still have to avoid hits. It's a little different from a, maybe a receiver getting down quicker or just not solidly running so, that route. You're a target as a running back, and he still looked like he had. So you think he's going to be their feature? You think he's going to be the Redskins' feature back? Oh no, he's going to be the starting running back. There's no question. There, there. I mean, anyone that tells you something else, they're 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 not. Being no, that's why I'm asking you. I, you're you're up <laughs> yeah, close. Yeah, no, you're right there. No, I mean, but but the question it's, is, it's, it's, how long? Yeah, right? How long? How 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 long are those numbers? You know, I mean that that type of shortage. I mean that that can flame out pretty fast, well, right? Well, well, I'll say this, and and he's he's made it quite clear, and it, it kind of you know took a lot of us aback, you know, who who cover the team. He, he's he's gone out of his way to let people know that he didn't have necessarily the best offensive line play to, for him over the last you know season or so, um, specifically. You know, in Arizona, right. you know, he did say right. we know the situation in New Orleans. Obviously, right, right. Two really good young running backs. So, uh, with Kamara and and, uh, and Ingram, but he, he's, you know, he and Trent Williams are good friends. They're great friends, actually. They're really close. So he's excited to play with his former, uh, you know, Oklahoma guy, and and they have they own a business together in Houston, a gym down there where they've always worked out, and. Just for him to be with one of his good friends is exciting, but that friend happens to be one of the best offensive linemen in football, and that's what Peterson keeps telling telling us is that he's excited because Brandon Scherf, guard, is also two time Pro Bowler. Um, Morgan Moses on the right uh, right tackle is a budding guy that can be a, a Pro Bowl uh, player this year. So he looks at this line as. You know, this is one of the better lines in the NFL. You know, obviously we know about Dallas. The Eagles line was great last year. But the Redskins have a top-10 caliber offensive line. Interesting. And and I think he feels like, you know, in this offense, where they're just not going to put eight in a box on me, he may be able to, to prolong his career a little bit. And I don't think he's looking at this as a one-year thing. I think he feels like those two years – you know what I noticed, Q, more than anything else? And I wrote about this yesterday. Uh, you know, someone was like, oh, that's clickbait. And I'm like, no, that's what the man said out of his mouth. What he said was, they had, you know, it was that he was asked um, after practice, what does he want to accomplish this year? You know, and he went on a bunch of things. 
but the thing that stood out the most to me was him saying, I want to help this team win a championship, he said, and I want to continue being the best player in the league. That mindset is just, that's all you need to know. We know he's not the best player in the league, but he'll feel upset if you feel like he's not. And I think that that's something that this team specifically needed. They they needed someone that, you know, can maybe work ethic-wise, show a lot of the younger guys how it's done. And I think that's a big role for them, too. And remember, Scott came from that knee injury. Darius Geist, their rookie, who tore his ACLs out for the season at LSU, you know, he's got this guy in the building now. Me, how he recovered from that same injury. So there are a lot of variables as to why they brought him here, but clearly they brought him in here to, to push for the job, and he got it. He, he, he won it out. Jay Gruden slipped up and said, literally, Q, <laughs> uh, we asked him two days ago on Sunday, we had a practice Sunday, asked him uh, when did he know that Adrian Peterson could be the starting running back? And his exact answer was, doing his workout wow <laughs> you know it's funny too peterson and morris they didn't have jobs a couple of weeks ago and in the preseason i think 30 carries for a buck 40 listen if he got eight if he ran for 800 yards this year i would be stunned oh, be great i would be that stunned would be i wouldn't i, I okay just, i just think you know in the, you know in the nfl oh you know, sure you you're right it was average 60 oh, I know. Yeah, yeah gary brown so. had a thousand year a thousand yards one year with a horrible giants team Right, and, and, and I mean, and, and, and Rob Kelly here and, yep. and uh, yep. Samaje P. Ryan, they were 500-yard backs with injuries. Yeah. So, and with makeshift lines, because that line was decimated last year. By week three, it was a whole different line. So, I think Adrian Peterson clearly should be able to do 800 or more. Mm. I'm not saying he's going to lead the league in rushing, but I definitely think he's going to be a factor for the Redskins offense that, that just, uh, a week and a half ago looked like it was going to be in turmoil again at the running back position. Um, you know what Chris Thompson can do, right. but, but Chris isn't, isn't that workload back. Right. And now they, now they have a premier one who's proven that. And um, that first game last week, it was we, we were looking at ourselves up in the press box like, wow, he doesn't look 33 at all. Mm. He really doesn't. So we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, as always, I uh, appreciate a, a little extended segment. Great stuff as always. Uh, we will talk next week. Uh, one more week, my friend, and then we're good to go. <laughs> all right, man. Get through the dog. coming up. <laughs> yeah. Get the dog days of summer. You know, you're you're rolling around over there with the uh, the white towel, all drenched in the sweat, and putting it hey, in. Hey, man, time. that's why. You look like you look like you're cutting now, weight. Man. You look like you're cutting weight. I have, man. I have. I've lost about 13 pounds, and I'm trying to lose a little bit more. But I got to tell you. I really don't have to work out much because it's so hot outside. <laughs> That's true. I will right, well, stay cool out there. I know it gets pretty nasty down there as well. We'll talk next week. Uh, always appreciate it, bud. All right. Take care, man. All right. You got it. Lake Lewis does a great job covering the NFL. Of course, the Redskins.